Welcome to the webinar this afternoon, uh, dealing with computer system validation, uh, the big picture. Um, I'm happy to be the one to kick off 2020 with our webinars uh, series for this year. So again, glad you uh, could take some time aside this afternoon or morning, evening, wherever you are located in the in the world uh, to join me as, as I discuss this topic. A little bit about myself, uh, just before we dive in. Um, as Brenda mentioned, I'm the Director of uh, Software Validation Services at CSOLS. Uh, so uh, within our company, we have the, the multi-facets of uh, services within the informatic space. Uh, my group handles all software validation, whether that be LIMS, chromatography. Uh, I have about just over 21 years of uh, experience validating computer systems in the regulated industry. Um, and that spans the, um, the gamut from large pharma, CRO, vaccines, um, as it says there, GLP, GMP, little GCP, um, definitely R&D systems. I've also um, have experience implementing um, systems at the laboratory level, enterprise level, uh, working with infrastructure and networks, um, whether it be a small lab or global systems. Um, and then also have experience doing laboratory system and data integrity audits as well. So for um, just quick hit agenda for what I'll be discussing today, I'm looking at that big picture, thinking big. Uh, so first thing I want to do though is set that scene, kind of explain the parameters, maybe a little bit more of of uh, what I'm going to discuss, and then get into those five success factors that we've found at CSOLS through our experience of doing software validation, um, where those heavy uh, hit areas are for you to consider. Uh, just a couple quick case studies at the end um, in failure um, so that we can, can help kind of point out uh, not just success factors, but where these pitfalls are as well along the way. Um, and then kind of loop back around with a big picture checklist. Um, and as Brenda mentioned, we'll have some time of, uh, you know, at the end for Q&A. So if you have any questions, like she said, jot them down or stick them in, uh, type them in the box there so they're not missed. Um, all right. So, I'll set the scene a little bit for you. Um, and uh, this, these success factors um, will apply to a new implementation or an upgrade. So um, if you're just thinking about bringing on a new system, maybe it's your first system that you've ever implemented and then you're looking at what do I do? How do I do that? And want to know the big picture, um, you know, this can apply. This these success factors and, and pitfalls will also apply to you have a validated system and now you want to do an upgrade, um, but maybe it's been a while since you've done it or uh, maybe the first time around you, it was your first time and so now you've learned a little bit more. So these can apply across the board for, for a new implementation to upgrade. Um, also, we'll address a little bit about vendor provided documentation um, and uh, just keep in mind that as go through this, um, uh, we do recommend in our, within our processes and how we approach software validation and how we'd work with any client is, is making use of that vendor provided documentation. Um, but that usually uh, just addresses out of the box functionality, um, mainly IQ and OQ in terms of test scripts are provided and you might possibly get some functional requirements spec. So maybe that's the situation you're in now. Um, and you've got this system, you've got vendor provided documentation and is that all I need is, is just what the vendor gives me? Uh, that, that's what we'll get into uh, a little bit as we go through this. Um, but also keeping in mind when we put these success factors together um, and where the pitfalls might be with these, we understand that your labs have day to day business to maintain. Um, so that's, that's one of the big areas of focus because it's a big undertaking to validate a system and bring it in and up in line. But these success factors also focus on, hey, you have other things to do. Your lab has other things to do. So how can you make use of best use of people's time and, and everything to get that system up? Um, and bottom line, I'm sure everyone wants to keep it as simple as possible, um, especially if it's your first, um, uh, first validated system, your first implementation. Um, you know, it, you can bring in a very complicated, robust, uh, complex system. Um, they're out there. We've worked with them and maybe you've seen them. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, you just want to get that system up and running and keep it simple and get your lab back in business. 
so the first success factor we'll, we'll dive into is planning. It uh, makes sense to be right up front, as, as some people say. If 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 you don't, uh, if you fail to plan, then what you're going to like plan to fail. So let's let's go in to planning. There's for this success factor. There's three um, types of plans that I'll discuss. Uh, the first two be first two being what you see on the screen: project plan and quality plan. Um, and as I go through these two and the eventual one on the next slide, um, and I'll, I'll mention it again, but keep in mind these these are uh, types of plans, but they don't have to be separate individual um, plans. You can kind of lump, you can pull these together, you can keep them separate. Maybe your policies, procedures require each one, but if you don't have any experience with this, or if you're wondering, hey, how can I make best use of these? That's what I want to focus on. So when we're talking about a project plan, that's really the document or section of a document that's really your overarching, overall scope uh, of your validation project and your implementation project, right? Which <clears throat> focusing mainly on validation. So that's going to highlight your deployment. You can use that project plan to say these are the sites, the labs, locations, um, <clears throat> whether you're going to have regional databases, local databases, um, site, things like that. All that can go into that project plan. A high level schedule and timeline is good in your project plan. Uh, this doesn't have to get to the week by week, day by day level, because that is something you want to maintain offline. That's, that's that's kind of a, a massive undertaking, but within your project plan document, um, you could approach it as a month by month. Um, and if it's an extended long project, maybe it's to the point where quarter by quarter, right? If we're looking at a, a large validation. Uh, but realistically, what that project plan does is allows, once you get that in there, your deployment, how, how you're uh, uh, going to deploy it, what your schedule timeline is, what's your dependencies and exclusions. So um, maybe you have six labs, but only four of them are going to be implemented or upgraded. So you want to call that out. It, it really sets that stage. A quality plan um, is at the, uh, maybe not the next level down, but it's a little bit different than the project plan, as you see there, because it focuses more on how you're going to validate the system um, and how it's going to fit into your quality system, whether that be policies, process, procedures, whether that be other systems, uh, whether that be regulatory um, specifications that the system needs to adhere to. So that quality plan, again, could be a separate document, could be part of your project plan, um, but you focus, you can use that quality plan to address how does, how is your validation going to fit into or what, uh, derives the validation based on your software development lifecycle and process. Again, if you don't, maybe you don't have an STLC um, in place, so that might be a way to use this quality plan is, is to use that to create one. Uh, but you can also address company and regulatory quality requirements within your quality plan and change management. And, and this level of change management isn't to, um, not that it can't be, but the, the point on this slide and then this success factor is this change management isn't to the point of how do I make a change to my validated system? Rather, this is, I have an environment that um, is, it runs these servers, um, runs these other software applications. How does my new validated or upgraded validated system going to fit into that environment? What's the change that needs to be made uh, so that I can bring this system online, right? Some clients that we work with, they have a change management process where a change control needs to be open because now you're impacting a regulated environment, right? So uh, topics like that you can put into a quality plan or a quality plan section. Right? And the last plan that I'm, uh, of the three that we recommend uh, addressing and considering uh, is the validation plan. And this is specific to the system that you're going to validate. Again, some clients that we work with, and I've seen myself in the industry over the years, is uh, there's also a validation master plan. And maybe that's that document I've more, more often seen at a much larger level dictating how you're going to validate systems, what systems are validated, what's the periodic review, things at a much higher level. This type of plan is at a system specific validation level, right? So this allows you to address the approach, 
um, how you're going to validate, what resources you're going to apply or use during uh, to, to get the system validated, who's responsible for what, uh, when are you going, when or what will be the acceptance criteria to say that that system can now go live and be used in your production environment. Uh, and then it can touch a little bit on um, what that means to release the system and how you're going to maintain that system once you're in production. So as I mentioned, things like do you do periodic review? Do you, uh, how are you going to handle upgrades to that system? How are you going to handle maybe possibly rolling out new sites? Um, you know, does that require a new whole full validation or, or um, you know, a subset of, of testing? Things like that um, is, that's where we find really good success in creating a validation plan to capture that. So as I mentioned before, we're, we're talking success factors, but I also think it's just as critical or just as helpful to discuss where the pitfalls are for these success factors. Um, so when we're talking about planning, one thing you want to make sure is that you don't, um, or a, fit, a pitfall we've seen, I'll take it at that angle instead, is that we've seen some clients fail to address key regulatory requirements and industry best practices. So keep in mind uh, some, some of the, the guidelines out there. Uh, that are industry best practice like GAMP, PICS, um, as, as a couple examples that, that really help drive and guide you through the validation process. So it's great if you have a validation plan, a quality plan, or even a much larger project plan, but if you're missing um, some key regulatory requirements within your plan, like how are you going to um, handle a risk-based approach and we'll talk about risk assessment as another success factor but within your plan are you addressing how you're going to approach a risk-based validation um, it's one thing to say it but you know make sure you explain what that means um, are you going to um, uh, use the system uh, some clients we work with and have used a system in both a um, let's say a, a QC or regulated a more tightly can, uh, restricted use, but also then using it in more of a R&D research um, approach as well. So uh, are you going to take a, a slightly different approach maybe on some of the configuration or some of the validation? Again, make sure you address these key regulatory requirements. Um, another area pitfall that uh, we've seen is that there's sometimes little or no involvement from key end users or your impacted groups. Um, validation is a lot of documentation. I think anyone who's done it um, knows that and documentation is a success factor I'll get to later. Um, but when you can sit down and have these people write documents um, and use templates and, and generate these deliverables, but if you don't have that involvement from key end users, um, you might miss something. You might miss critical aspects. If you don't have um, IT reviewing your plan, maybe they're not going to be aware of how you intend to install it or the environment that you want to put the system into. Um, another area is when validation is an afterthought. And I know this topic of this webinar is the big picture of focusing on software validation. But when we're talking about writing a project plan, maybe you're starting this project plan earlier in in the process right so you're going to start a project plan now that's going to address everything that's involved um, and uh, we've seen this happen sometimes where validation is at the end right i mean that's usually the last thing you do maybe end user training is is down there too but start earlier start looking at what validation means and and work that into a plan um, up ahead don't just wait until the end and then say okay well now let's figure out how we're going to validate um, and recycling a generic approach, uh, not that a generic approach is bad. Um, you can, I, we definitely recommend using templates. Um, it's, you know, why recreate the wheel? But the hesitation here is when you just take a generic approach and just, and just put it out there and reuse it. Um, and not take into consideration the specific differences of a, from one system to the next. Um, so let's say the last system you validated or, or what system you have validated in the past was a chromatography data system um, and you have a validation plan that you wrote or a quality plan that you wrote for that CDS. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you can just go in, do a search and replace and put your LIMS system name in there and use that val plan for a LIMS validation, right? Um, it, a lot of it may apply. Pay attention and don't just 
grab the last document you use, like I said, do a cut and paste and, and reuse it.